Why, hello there, art venturers. In this video, I'm going to show you the way that I like to draw these chibi type characters. Here's a couple examples of ones that I've done lately for my fantasy tabletop role playing game I've been working on called World of Chibu. And it's uh, very fun to create these kind of characters because it's a lot easier than working on a character with very uh, strict kind of more realistic proportions but it also allows you here's another fella a little kingdom hearts uh, related or inspired fan art made of my own little kingdom hearts chibi character so it's a really fun way to start creating characters and enjoying that process while also starting to work on anatomy so you can see with this guy i've actually been able to work in some um more realistic anatomy to his body uh, even though he's this kind of cartoony character and i'm really a big fan on my other channel i made the whole fantastic anatomy series which is something that actually would be fun to reboot and do an updated uh, series with my newfound skills that i've developed over the years but um but yeah i really feel that playing around with drawing without worrying about proportions can be a really excellent way to start having fun while developing your skills and so let's get started so the first thing is as most things is starting with that circle you know when you create any kind of head a lot of times a lot of methods will have you create a circle and subdivide it into four sections so we're going to go ahead and do that and we'll start off from front view the next thing is just to give your chibi character, I almost call him a chibu, because that's what I call him in World of Chibu, um, these little cheeks. So starting from this midpoint, kind of giving them this, this kind of a, a shape, okay? And I'll show you what this looks like. So we'll do two heads, one from side view, or one from three quarters view, and one from front view. So that's a front view one, and then the three quarters one will look something like this. So I'm gonna create that subdivision. And that curve is going to mostly go right here on the side which he's looking at. And there won't be the same curve on the other side. The next thing is the ears are going to come right around. The top of the ears will be around this uh, center divider line you've created. And of course you can make them as big or as small as you like. And you've already gotten like this really cool head shape. So one of the little tricks that I've learned is having the features lower down on the face really adds to that cuteness vibe. So the way we'll do the next step, I think, is to kind of create the top of the eyes somewhere around that center line. And then even before that, I think it's really cool to just even just start like, do something like that and see, oh, do I like that placement? Hmm, what if I put it even lower? Do I like that placement? It's a different vibe. What if, so you can just use two circles, a line for the nose and a line for the mouth. Now it looks like you might be looking up a little more. But yeah, we wanna leave enough forehead and I think a good place to do it is somewhere around here, like that. So you can even start with that and just add two lines on top and then you've pretty much gotten the whole, the eyes done. So here's a couple tips for the eyes. I like to actually start with the eyebrows first and putting those down and then keeping the eyes closer to the center. So see how there's more space on this left side than there is on the right? For some reason, this creates a little more of like a cute, a cute vibe, you know what I'm saying? And you can even have them look pretty badass while also being cute, which is something I really like. So here I'm gonna do the same on this side, like this and this maybe. We'll put the eyes here and there. And you can see how on both sides, the it's a little sketchy, so you might not be able to tell as well. But I'm going to have some space on here, but this is kind of pushing up right against the, the inside of the eye, right? Something like that. And the way that, you know, you're going to find the perfect spacing for the three-quarter view. Um, but you're going to have the nose is going to be further to the right of this line because it's sticking out a bit maybe. 
and maybe just under the eye line, but not too far down there for these chibi characters. And the mouth can be, you know, somewhere right in between the nose, the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin. But you can even like, you could put the mouse there and have them, give them doing a little smirk. See what I mean? So that's a fun way to do this. So you can just have a little dot for the mouth and a line for the, for the mouth. Now, actually, I think that I've made the head a little too high here. I usually like to have the head maybe right around down there, right? So that there really isn't too much room for a chin at the very bottom. So now you've got the basic, the basic outline for this chibi character, right? And then from here, you can go all sorts of directions. So one of the cool things is, I mean, you can use shapes for the nose, so you could kind of use a, um, and check out my nose drawing tutorials to see like the basic shape of the nose that I would use, but you could have it just be a little circle. So you can do different things there. I kind of have been leaning towards just a little dot. So let me go back to the gallery and you can now kind of see how I've utilized this, this head in different ways. So see just a little line and I put a little shading under there. So little subtleties like that can help the nose pop. It's a very anime inspired style. Here you see again it's a line, but it's a, it's a longer line. It gives them a bit of a wider nose, and when I color it, um, give them a little bit of pink shading there. If you're interested in like a coloring and inking tutorial, I won't get into that now, but definitely let me know in the comments, and I'd be happy to show you how I take this to a more finished uh, inked and colored sketch. So the next step maybe is to add some eyebrows, and this is where you can get a lot of expression. Now the top of the eyes will kind of echo the eyebrows. So if this eyebrow is going like that, that makes sense. If this eyebrow is going like this, maybe we want to cut into here and have this, this eye echo. It doesn't quite look right, but um, let's see. How can we make him, make him look a little more confused? Hmm, I'm not sure. It's not really working out. Sometimes you got to experiment. But one thing I also notice is that the eye looks a little bit skewed. So you know, you come in here and you kind of notice things. If you come at it with a fresh eye, that's another little tip. Leave it alone for a little while and then come back and look at it and you'll be like, oh yeah, that eye looks crooked, let me move it over. So you can literally just make circles for the eyebrows. You can have the bottom be flat and the top be rounded. You know, sometimes they'll do very, very small little little eyebrow indications sometimes you know a teardrop shape is another great shape so kind of getting creative with the eyebrows is one place where you can start to um, distinguish your your chibi character make him unique then the next thing is the hair now hair can be a whole other tutorial and I won't profess to be a master of hair but the one thing you can the one main tip I'll give you is to kind of think about this hairline right so you're going to give a little bit, you know, a little bit of space here where that sideburn type area comes down. And guys will often have this shape, which you can think about. Basically just making sure that there's enough space for the forehead and um, enough space here, you know, from the eye and have a little bit of uh, hair in this area. And then kind of go with some cool shapes, you know. So you can get like, see, I can just make some kind of cool shape that I like without even thinking too much about, is it, you know, if you're just kind of making up any character, if you're working from a reference, you know, you can, you can copy that, you, you can be more specific, but you can just start off by making a cool shape, you know, and kind of working from there. Now, like I said, I won't get too much into hair because one, I haven't really figured out a clear method, so I, I wouldn't be able to to teach you guys like a particular method and um, still working on it myself and it feels like a whole topic in and of itself. But another thing you could do, so here I'm thinking, I'm imagining this hairline, right? And that's why I decided let me start from right around here where that top of the hairline will be. And let me add, you can do little chunks. So here's another little method, like you can just add a bunch of chunks like this building it out, maybe some chunks in the back. And then from there, I would like simplify the shape to like one shape, maybe add a little bump there. 
and I could do something like that to get a uh, oh this could be a little flower so this could be a, a girl chibi character how do you distinguish the males from the females well one thing is um, you know thicker uh, eye, la eye lashes can be one thing with chibi characters it's not always as definitive but you know rounder rounder head shape so if I want to make this guy a little more masculine potentially let me just I can sharpen so see instead of like that instead of uh, having that shape right like rounded like that instead I'm making it pointier give it that pointy pointy edge to it and uh, you know give him a little give him a little mustache <laughs> Kind of looks weird with his mouth over there. I don't know if that, how that would work uh, exactly. You know, this is another place where it would take some experimenting. But you could give him, if you were, you know, give him a little facial hair or something. But I liked him the way he was. Let me get back to that cute little smile of his. Nice. And then now let's get into the body a little bit. And I'm kind of, again, if you want a more in-depth tutorial on any of these things, just let me know in the comments and I will be happy to do it. But um, yeah, let's get into the drawing the body a little bit. So we can draw another three quarters head later. We'll say goodbye to our fellow here. Oh, he's a nice fellow. You know what? Let's duplicate the layer. Maybe I'll finish drawing him at some point. I feel bad just writing him off the face of the earth, but we need to make some space. So for the bodies, the basic shape is something like this. So it's basically a rounded triangle and maybe twice as tall as it is wide, something like that. And then just continuing down from there, just add some, some feet like that. And then you can work on the proportion. So actually maybe make it a little bit, a little bit smaller. I feel like I want to, like the heads to be quite big, but it depends on how how big you want the heads to be. And actually, let me show you some examples of chibi characters that I've done. Here's another little guy I like this guy. <laughs> He's got an eggshell on his head. That's his helm. The prompt for that was fragile. So where are these here, some characters? Um, this is supposed to be a halfling, so you can see, you know, the proportions, but it's not fully as chibi, if it was fully kind of chibi, the head might be bigger. Um, and then here are some like this guy, this is a character from my D&D campaign, definitely proportioned a lot less chibi, but the head is still one, two, three, he's about four heads high. Of course, that is not, your head is not a fourth of the size of your body in normal proportion. So he's still kind of chibi-esque. So you can really mess around with the proportions um, to, you know, to however big or small you want the heads to be. And this is another way where you can experiment with anatomy and start to get more comfortable. So with female characters, if you want to kind of make the waist a little bit, like emphasize the, the hip size, make the waist a little small, you can cut away this, this area and that'll give you kind of, you can even actually make this in like almost like a pill shape to give the, um, the chest area for a female. And then, but, and then for the male ones, just in contrast would be more just leaving it kind of almost just like this, um, unless you decide to go for a more, you know, proportioned, uh, like realistically proportioned character. So you could put like this pill shape and then just kind of cut away a little bit. And now you see that the hips are wider and it's got the uh, breasts there. So that's going to indicate a more female character. And the next thing is to give a little, little maybe little circles for the arms. And this part is kind of, you can, one way that's cool to position the arms is actually to draw the forearms first, which can be as like these ovals and then connect them. And this is helpful for when you're trying to position the arms in a different area. So you could have her, let's say, holding, holding a staff or something or holding something there. See how putting the forearm first and then connecting it 
can be helpful. Um, and having the hands come down about to the waist, I think they usually make the, and this is something, you know, experiment with all of this, but I usually make the arms a little bit longer than might make sense and the legs a little bit shorter because um, the arms can then, for me, like carrying a weapon or something like that, so give her like a cool spear. Or let's see, this, she might have like a wand. I feel like she seems like a, like a wand bearing chibu. And check out my video on like the basic hand drawing positions, like some easy short, short hand versions for how to draw hands. Uh, so this one, like basically I was doing a circle for the part that's gripping over and then another circle for the thumb. So just kind of simplifying it shorthand. Here I'll do the main pointer finger and then let me make it a little more clear. And then the thumb. And then I'll just kind of have this line like that to indicate the other fingers, but not really show them if she her hand is just relaxing at the side. So you've got belly button, you know, would be around there if you put a belly button on it on the character. And um, next is the feet, just little, little tiny, something like that, see? And keeping them really small, I think, is the cutest, the cutest way to get these chibi character proportions. And I mean, from there, you can get into drawing whatever costumes and whatever, uh, you know, like working on the next steps of it expanding your character and giving it some personality. So let's do this quickly from three quarter view. So we can come back here to our friend. Oops. Or should we draw it again? Let's draw another one so you can get another example. And apparently I'm on the wrong layer. I'll take that as a sign. So we won't finish our friend right now. So here we've got, and you can see actually this time I made the head a little bit wider than tall. And what I'm gonna do, so here's a slightly different technique. And I guess this is what I do naturally, but I think it's easier to learn starting from a perfect circle is I do the head wider, you know, this circle wider than tall. And then I just have this come down as opposed to doing a perfect circle. Oh, I guess uh, they said the same, the same thing. I just, I still come down to, to the, to the bottom, but I, Maybe this is just kind of how I like to make the heads a little bit wider. So um, experiment with that, see what, see what you like. And then let's even start with the nose and the mouth because I know those are gonna be really close to the bottom of the, of the chin. That's how I tend to like it. And we'll make this a guy character, so maybe make him. And this is, you know, these are just rules of thumb. You can definitely keep the head round and have it read as a masculine character. Uh, starting off with these the eyebrow things, something like that. And one of the things with iris is maybe keeping, you know, don't make it perfectly round, making it taller. So like this kind of shape for the eyes. And one thing you can do to practice too, actually, is draw the eyes like this with these little lines on top to the side and just start making little faces, you know, and see like, okay, how far apart? Like, what if I make them this far apart? Does that look good? What if I make them um, this far apart? How's that looking? That still looks kind of cool. So you can experiment with proportions and start to get an idea of what you like for your specific chibi characters. So I'll add the ears. And maybe let's make this guy looking off to the side. So to achieve that, we're just gonna push the eyes both looking one direction like that and then we'll leave it at that I guess and then let's give them some maybe thick eyebrows so I'm not loving this character I think I'm not loving the way he's looking but I think he's looking fine let's let's just continue but what I would do if I was kind of trying to draw this more on my own and kind of getting a good look Maybe you drop this. Yeah, let's let's just drop that a little lower. Really squishing the head into this bottom part makes them extra cute, I think. And this guy, let's give him just some short hair so you can see 
the hairline in action. Right, so his hair could be something like that. So that defines the hairline, or maybe we can, he could have his hair pulled back and give him a little bun. Cool. Okay. And maybe I'll give him a, a little bit of a nose like that. So one thing you can do with the nose is leave one area highlighted right in the center and kind of lightly darken the other parts and it kind of gives it that little bit of a 3D5. So now for the body, we're going to use the same idea. And one thing that you can start to experiment with is, is the spine curved back like that? So the chest is out. Or is he leaning a little bit forward? And to kind of get a more of a, a sense of that, you can check out my gesture drawing video where I kind of talk about um, constructing these uh, beanbag shapes to, to start to create different gestures. So, but for this one, let's keep something pretty neutral. We're gonna start off with that same triangle shape. And then the one thing we wanna do with the legs is have this one skew, have it skewed a little bit so it's not directly centered. See the center of the legs is over to the right a bit from the center line. And then I also like to overlap um, that line a little bit. So that gives it the sense that, you know, this leg is in the foreground. So something like that. And see, I think actually I made the head too far, so this is something I tend to do. But really, the neck should be a little bit shorter, closer. And then the neck is going to be further past the center line. So this is like the center of the head here, maybe if you were to divide it in half. And it's a little bit, a little bit further, further back, something somewhere around there, right? This arm is gonna be in front, so we can use the same technique and this arm, you might only just see the shoulder and you might not see the other hand if it's just hanging by his side. If he's maybe pointing at something, you could do it like that, put a circle for the hand, circle for the hand here. And then you've got the basic, basic outline. And so from here, you can use whatever anatomy skills. And so if you want to make it a little more realistic or like a, a thinner character, you can uh, carve out from this area, and do something like that maybe. Again, for the feet, you've got these, you sh these, what is this, half circle shapes. And I mean, that's pretty much it. From here, you would start to add in details and you know take the sketch to the next level but I just wanted to get you guys you know show you guys how I like to do the proportions because I've been having so much fun making these characters and I thought some of y'all out there might enjoy the process too so that's it for now I hope that this video has imbued you with just a little bit more pencil, pencil. power, power. Right on.